before Jesus is arrested. And uh, we come to this passage. In verse 36, I'm going to start reading. So if you, health allows, would you please stand with us out of respect to reading God's Word. Beginning at Matthew 26, verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. See, Jesus had a little redneck in him too. Anybody that says yonder, that's my kind of people right there. Verse 37, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh to the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it. Thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith to them, Sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Let's stop it by our heads right there. Father, today we come from all different walks of life, all kinds of problems and stressful situations and probably ever life here. Lord, we've got worries and fears and requests. But God, today, most importantly, we pray your will be done in each one. Help us to learn from these words. Jesus, the Bible says that you were tempted in every way just as we are. Therefore, you know how to help us in our times of trials. And the night in which we're studying here, Father, was an exceedingly stressful night for you. A very difficult one. Help us to learn from it. Because, Lord, each one of us is going to have to go through our dark valleys too. But that's okay because we know what lies in store at the end of our journey. To God be the glory. Lord, if there's somebody here today that their heart's not ready to meet you, may today be the day of salvation. May today be the day of revival. And God, may the day be a day we lift you up and honor you in all things. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Stressful conditions. Jesus, I think, knew exactly what was fixing to happen. If you've ever had to wait on the law to come pick you up and arrest you and you knew they was coming, that's a stressful situation, I assume. (laughs) Uh, No, I don't assume either. I know. It's tough. He's sitting there, and instead of formulating his plan of escape, or instead of saying how he's going to take them on, he spends his time in prayer. The Bible says in another gospel that he had great sweat drops of blood dropping from his face, that he was in such agony. I don't know what kind of problems that you've been through or what dark valleys you've had to go through on your journey, but there's been some agonizing times in life. Thank you, Levi. Appreciate that. Somebody help me out here. Amen. Amen. Jesus is sitting there. He's been talking to the disciples. Matter of fact, he just washed their feet a little while ago, including Judas. As he washed the feet of the man he knew was fixing to go betray him, Jesus showed Judas love. If someone in here today, and I knew you was fixing to have me arrested, and I told you I was going to wash your feet, you better not trust me because I'm going to break a foot if I get a chance, you know. I ain't as good as Jesus, all right? Pray for me, all right? I got a ways to go. Um, 
I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't cotton to getting locked up too much. That ain't no fun. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Thank you, brothers and sisters. But he knew they was coming, and he spent time of praying, and he agonized before the Lord. And part of what we're going to do Saturday night is learn exactly what Jesus went through by just getting on our face before God. And I want to teach some of our men or women, whoever shows up, how to listen to God speak. And you know what? If they want to say that our vice president has a mental condition because he is a Christian and says that God speaks to his heart, can I tell you something? I'm all in for craziness today, all right? As a, as a matter of fact, I told a preacher one time, you ain't got to be crazy to come to our church, but it sure does help a lot anyhow, you know? And I'm telling you something, folks, I'll take a handful of crazies for Jesus any day. As I heard an inmate say last night, I want them brothers that's been through the fire. I want them brothers that's been through the wars. They've bled together. They know what it's like to suffer. They don't give up and run whenever the first sign of trouble shows up. And today, I want a church just like that men and women who have heard who have been there we've got our physical scars we've got our emotional scars we've got all kinds of issues inside of us but thank God Jesus loves us just as messed up as we are today what would we do without him and if I told y'all today the law was on your way to pick you up and you was being arrested we'd have very few people remain here for the rest of church today I ain't too sure I'd be preaching neither. But Jesus did. You know what I learned from this? Jesus, you got to play the hand that's dealt to us. And it ain't always going to be what we like. Right, Chad? It ain't always going to be what we wish. It always ain't easy to get through. These disciples, just a little while ago, Peter said, Lord, I'd even die with you. And they're all like, yeah, us too. Yeah, us too. They ain't going to make it through the night. Just a few hours ago, they was telling him how close they was and how good a friend they was. And by the way, these people have to tell you how a good friend they are to you. Probably ain't much of a friend. Come on. Right. I, I like them brothers that don't tell you. They just show up and help. Amen. Like I've said before, you want to know who your real friends are? Move. And say, I'm moving Saturday. Anybody wants to help me move? And your friends will show up. Most people will say, call me if you need me. And then they won't answer the phone when Saturday rolls around, you know. <laughs> I'm busy. I was fishing. I couldn't hear it. Something or another. Jesus was surrounded by these 11 men who claimed to be his friends, and they were his brothers. But just a little bit down in verse 56, we see that the whole bunch of them run out and fled and left Jesus and betrayed him. It wasn't just Judas, it was all of them. But we see Jesus here and he's trying to teach them and he's taking them out into the garden. I think it's interesting to note that in Jesus' his last few minutes, his last hours of freedom, his last hours of not suffering on this earth, he didn't spend it going to the temple, he didn't spend it going to see his family, he spent it going out to the woods to get along with his father and pray to God. Yeah, he took the disciples with him, but he told most of them to sit here, took three of them a little bit longer, a little farther to pray for him, and then he goes by himself over yonder. Most of y'all know where that's at, unless you're from up north, you don't realize over yonder is just down the road a little bit. Over yonder, the distance is determined by whether you're driving or walking or whatever. But uh, over yonder is just far enough that I can get over there and hear God speak back to me. Saturday night, you know what we're going to do in the woods? We're going to go over yonder. And we're going to try to listen to God speak to our hearts. And when we come out of them woods, there's going to be some brothers that's got answers in their heart. And you know something? When we get those answers, when the Lord speaks to us, he gives us peace. And I believe that Jesus right now is in a time where he needs that peace of God. We don't find Jesus too many times when he's looking for help. We don't find Jesus too many times when he shows his human weakness. But here's one of them. Some stressful conditions today. And I want to share with you as we look into these verses just a couple of things. Stressful conditions call for powerful prayers, lots of faith, but they also reveal our character, don't they? You find out what a person's really made of when they got their back against the wall. I had a lady, I probably shouldn't say this, I don't 
I mean to say this in the wrong way, but I had a, a nurse tell me when they sewed this ear back on my head, which I still wish I didn't have an ear. <laughs> Even though I'm done with it and I don't have to hurt no more, two and a half hours, that was <laughs> no fun whatsoever, I promise you, with uh, no uh, pain or anything like that to help it. They just uh, sewed it on while I laid there and cried. Literally, tears went out my eyes for two and a half hours, but I kept smiling. And the nurse told me this. She said, Mr. Williams, we get a lot of bikers in here because, you know, motorcycle accidents, and they're pretty severe. And um, she said, we get these guys here all covered with tattoos, and we do something like that to them, and, and they're like a cat on the ceiling. She said, but you're the, the real deal. You just laid there and took it. And I was like, you mean I had a choice? <laughs> Where's the ceiling? I didn't know. I mean, I'd be on it too. If I really... But you know something, folks? Most people, to be honest, really don't have to go through a whole lot. Until one day something happens and changes their lives. Maybe a heart attack. Maybe a, a cancer is found. Maybe something happens. Maybe a, an accident. Maybe, uh, who knows, God just turns your life upside down. And I'm telling you, those disciples are fixed to find out the hard way when your life is turned upside down that God's still on the throne. Even though I can't understand and I can't realize what's happening today and I may not like what I'm going through and you might not appreciate what you're going through but God's still on the throne he ain't forgot about us he's still going to take care of us Amen. as a matter of fact I was doing some studying this week I got an answer for Deborah she asked me last week if God made the devil and God made heaven how could evil get into the devil's heart and I didn't have no answer for it but I may have an answer I got studying and I found out that the devil, even when he's working evil, is still accomplishing God's will. He just don't know it. And God had a plan before creation to redeem mankind. And I believe that God, when he created Lucifer, he put in Lucifer the ability to make the wrong decisions. God didn't force him to do evil. He allowed him to make that choice and he did it on his own because God knows all things. He knows what you're going to do and he knew what that devil was going to do. So let me remind you today, even though the devil may run rampant and it may seem like he's winning things in this whole world, he's still God's devil today and he can only do what God allows him to do. He can't go and inch father. He can't do anymore and when God says that's enough, then he can't touch us no more. But I'm telling you until we get to heaven, we're going to have to go through some things here. Come on. Stressful conditions. First of all, I want to talk to you about the condition of Christ. If Jesus is going through such stressful times, can't we learn from what he went through? But I want to warn you, it may not be real pretty. We're going to look at a side of Jesus some of y'all have never thought about before. We're going to look at the human side of Jesus. Understanding this, he was totally and fully God. But he was also totally and fully a human being. You say, preacher, explain that. I don't understand that neither, but I believe that, okay? And I tell you, if you want to know any more details, go ask Billy Graham. He could probably tell you now. He couldn't have last week, but he could now. And ask Jesus when you get his presence. He can tell you. Matter of fact, you won't need to ask him. When you get over there, you'll understand all things. Hey, I want to share a couple of things about the condition of Jesus Christ. First of all, I think he was depressed in verse 37 38. Verse 37 begins with saying, He took Peter, with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, and he began to be very sorrowful and very heavy, very troubled, downhearted. Verse 38, And he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here with me and watch with me. I see a Jesus here who has entered into a depressed state. His heart is heavy with birds. And understand this, he had just come from celebrating Passover. Passover is a huge celebration. They sit there, they drink wine, they celebrate the Lord's coming and all this thing. And they are to literally have a celebration, a joyful time. Whenever Jesus came and he died on Passover, he was the ultimate Passover lamb. The disciples didn't understand that yet because even though it's Passover, the lamb's still with him, but he's fixed to be carried away and put on a cross. Jesus goes from one of the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Do you ever notice life goes like that? 
Sometimes we get a real big time. Maybe God speaks to your heart. Maybe God saves somebody in your family and you're so excited. Maybe God heals you from cancer and you're so thrilled and overwhelmed. Maybe God just touches your body and spares you from something very harsh or maybe even death. And hallelujah, how great it is. And not long after that, you find yourself in a very deep, dark depression. It happens, amen? Amen. Some of us say, well, I ain't never been depressed, preacher. Well, let me tell you something. These are one or two things. Either one, you're lying to me, which is probable, or two, you ain't got there yet. And let me tell you why I say that. If Jesus Christ got in his position that he was distressed and depressed, then you better believe we will too. He said, my, my spirit, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Under death, and you ever weep so bad when Steve was out there and we'd cry for him and pray? But I don't know if I've ever been so sorrowful unto death. I, maybe some of y'all have, but Jesus is showing a side of his humanity here that we don't see very much because you know what? We look at Jesus as a hero, and he is. We look at Jesus as invincible, and he was. But I want to tell you something. He's also human, and those nails hurt him, and those stripes that they put on him was painful, and he's sitting here going, in just a few hours, I've got to go endure that. And I'm going to tell you something. As much as Jesus was born for that moment, he was not looking forward to suffering. I see him as depressed in verse 37 and 38. And he goes from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. But secondly, I also see some doubt in Jesus. Look at verse 39. And he went a little farther and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see that little word, if? I love verse 39, it says, went a little farther and he fell on his face and prayed. Some of us hadn't even been on our knees in a long time, much less on our face. To fall down on our face, prostrate before the Lord and just to cry out to Almighty God, it shows my desperation. But I believe Jesus in verse 39 is also showing some doubt because you see that little old tiny word, if? He said, if it be possible, Father, what Jesus is saying, let me put that in country talk for you. Father, if there's any way we can do this without going to the cross, couldn't you let me be mugged and stabbed? How about letting somebody just shoot me? That might have been tough back then, but hey, couldn't I get somebody to do it a little bit faster? than having to suffer all night and all day. Lord, if you'd let a rock fall on my head and kill me, wouldn't that be cool? By the way, God loved Jesus more than we could ever imagine. And he could have stopped it at any time he chose to. But Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, For the joy that was placed before him, he endured even the suffering of the cross. God allowed his son to go and Jesus willingly went even though he didn't want to because of the fact that he loved you and I. He saw our face and that joy of that reuniting with us was so much that it empowered him to get over that. And today you and I have to go through some tough times but I want to tell you something even in the midst of my doubt. Lord, if you can change things around, that would be cool. But then Jesus said, but not my will, your will. In other words, I'd love to do it a little bit easier if we can. But if we can't, I'm cool with that. Shucks. You ever end your prayer with the shucks? Lord, I sure would like for you to heal my foot up. Lord, I sure would like to be able to walk around and let it. Lord, I sure would like to quit hurting. Hallelujah, amen. But if not, that's okay. Shucks. That'd be all right. Because you know what suffering does? James chapter 1, verse 2 says, Count it all joy, brethren, when you suffer various trials and temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience, and that draws us closer to God. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather go through life and have no problems and drift away from God and not know the master than die and go to hell? Or would you rather hurt here? Or would you rather suffer here 
and allow that suffering to draw us to the feet of Jesus where we need to be because that's the only place we're going to get our help. You can't get it in a bottle. You can't get it in a baggie. You can't get it in a buzz. You can only find it in the blessed master Jesus Christ for falling down at his face today. And I want to tell you when Jesus had a doubt and said, Lord, if there's any other way, I'd sure love to have it. I'm going to fall down on my face and cry out to God. And I'll tell you, even in the midst of Jesus' depression and in the midst of his doubt, he still said, but Lord, your will be done, not mine. As if that ain't enough, I believe Jesus was not only depressed and doubting, but thirdly, I think he was disappointed. Look at verse 40. Verse 40 says, And he cometh to the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Now, I don't know about you, and we don't have any uh, voice inflection. I can't tell how he said those words. But I got a feeling Jesus is getting kind of just a little bit fed up with Peter's sorriness, if I may say so. Don't get me wrong. Peter's a lot better Christian than me, and I ain't got no right to call him sorry. But sometimes he just some plumb sorry. I can say that because I'm plumb sorry. I know what plumb sorry is because I is one. Therefore, I can recognize one. Some of y'all plumb sorry too, but just won't admit it. Amen. But I want to tell you something. Jesus is looking at Peter going, hey, dude. Couldn't you even stay awake an hour? This Saturday, when we go to the woods, I don't know how long we'll be in the woods, but you can bet it'll probably be at least an hour. And if I come to get you out your spot and you snoring, I'm going to tiptoe right by you. You're going to wake up and have no idea where you're at, and you're going to say, where's the preacher at? The preacher gone. You're going to say, where I'm at? I'm saying, you better get back to praying. Jesus said, boys, I, need, I called you three to come apart because I needed you here. I can count on you. You know, I've got a lot of people call themselves friends, don't you? You've got a lot of people who want to call themselves your friend, but there's only just a few, and you can count them on one hand that you can really count on. And here Jesus has got the three you can really count on, and that gummy if they didn't fall asleep on him. And Jesus is going, look, boys, man, I need you. Brad, I need you to pray with me. Y'all don't understand what's fixing to happen, but Jesus is saying, I'm telling you, boys, it's fixing to get rough. Y'all need to come on and pray because the, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Ain't that so true? The spirit is willing. I want to please God every day, but the flesh is weak. I fail God every day, and I have to ask forgiveness every day. I heard Billy Graham this week as playing parts of his preaching you know, this week on his on radio station, 106.9, and he said this. Well, I was in a hospital one night or two nights. He said, I, I thought I was going to die. And when I thought I was fixing to leave this world, I didn't pray to God, Lord, I'm a preacher. He says, no, my prayer was, Lord, I'm a sinner Amen. in need of your forgiveness. Come on. I want to tell you something, folks, no matter what you've done for God, it ain't good enough to get you into heaven. It's because we are sinners today and we have all disappointed Jesus just like Peter, James, and John did right here. And even in his disappointment, he still loves us. And I'm thankful today that I can call out to him and say, Father, I failed you again. Would you please have mercy on me? And according to what that Bible says, he loves me enough to continually forgive me. I can't understand that. I can't repeat that. I can't love you like that. My, I, my dog don't even love me that much, amen? And nothing loves you as much as your dog. If you're good to him, tell him, Jewel, amen. But you know what? He's not only disappointed, he was determined. Look at verse 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Hey, you know what he's saying there? He's saying, Lord, I guess it's not any other way to do this, is it? That if didn't get answered, huh? Okay. I tell you what, Lord. If that's your will, let's get her done. You know, I woke up in the hospital and I had all them rods stuck through me and everything. And they'd done all this crazy surgery on me. And I started just saying, you know, time out. I don't want to do this. Can I go home? But nobody let me go home. I'd love to say, you know what? Man, can't just be somebody else and let me go visit them because, you know, my job is to go visit in the hospitals, not lay in the hospital. I'm not a very good patient, you know. 
I didn't get that choice. So here's what I decided when I was in that hospital and I woke up with all them things stuck in me and I said, well, you know what, God? I guess you had a reason to put me here. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. I got home. My daddy said, boy, we got to get up and walk on that thing. I said, like, man, that thing hurts. Let's let it rest. He's like, nah, get her done. Okay, get her done. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still scared of him, so I, I got up and walked. <laughs> and... Uh, he told me when I was a teenager, he said, boy, you'll never get big enough to whoop me. And I still believe that. So I, I uh, got up. You know what? Some of you in a situation, and you ain't real fond of it, and maybe it hurts, and maybe it's scary, and maybe it's worrying you to death, and maybe you need to do just like Jesus and be determined. Even in your depression and your doubt and your disappointment, he was still determined enough to say, Lord, let's get the job done. I may be ragged and I may be broken and I may not be able to do a lot of things I used to could do, but I'm going to tell you what I am doing. I'm still going forward. I ain't going as fast as I was. I ain't climbing as much as I was, but I'm still inching my way towards Jesus. Amen. So I'll tell you something. When you can, run to Jesus. If you can't run, walk to Jesus. If you can't walk, crawl to Jesus. If you can't crawl, pull yourself one finger at a time and just get a little bit closer, inch by inch, unto the feet of Jesus because thank God he's determined today to save us if we call out. He's determined to forgive us if we ask him today and ain't nobody ever loved you quite like that. Right. Well that's the condition of Christ. I want to show you a second thing real quickly. The condition of the church. By the way the disciples here are the very first New Testament believers that's what we would call the church. Amen. So let's look at the condition of the church here in the stressful condition here. First of all, verse 36 tells me they were sitting down. Verse 36 says, Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray over yonder. He said, You boys just sit here for a little bit while I'm going to go over yonder. You know what's wrong with the church today? We're sitting while Jesus is going. Come on. You know why Jesus told them to sit here? Because he knew they wouldn't stay awake. He knew if Peter, James, and John weren't going to stay awake, them other eight guys, they ain't got a chance. Y'all just stay here. I ain't even going to invite y'all into the battle with me. Y'all just stay here. These other three boys, they're pretty tight. Y'all come on with me. And you know what the church's problem is today? We're still sitting while Jesus is still going. And I'll tell you something, folks. We're living in a changing world today. Technology is taking over. I don't understand it. I'm going to tell you something else. I don't know how we're going to reach this world out here today, but we need to be flexible enough to go wherever Jesus goes and tell him uh, we're just going to follow him, Lord, and quit sitting down. And that's the problem with too many churches today, we're full of people sitting down. Anybody sitting down here say amen? Come on, man. Some of y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> Everybody except them two sitting down, amen, and me. But I'll tell you something, folks, when we get rid of this service and we say amen, not getting rid of you, but when we run you out of here in a little bit, I want to know what you're going to do for Jesus out there. We need to quit sitting and start following him today. Second thing, they were not only sitting, but they were sorrowful. Jesus said, my soul is sorrowful unto death in verse 38. And I believe the disciples shared that sorrow. They were also upset. And they were, they were, they were beginning to see Jesus shake and tremble. And they've never understood why Jesus would do like this. They've never seen him shaking before. They were in a storm out on the Sea of Galilee. And the Bible says they were in fear of their life. And Jesus was asleep in the boat. What makes you and me panic? Puts Jesus to sleep. Sleep is drowsiness to him. But here for the first time, Jesus is the one who's in panic. And the disciples are the one that's drowsy. Boy, ain't we got it backwards. They were sitting and they were sorrowful. But thirdly, they were sleeping. Verse 40 says, he comes to his disciples and he findeth them asleep. At such a time as this, the church is asleep. Let me tell you something, people. At this particular moment, there are souls burning in hell while the church sleeps in America. We've got neighbors dying, going to suffering, eternal torment, fire and brimstone. And we're sleeping and don't care enough to even know our neighbor's name, 
Don't care enough to talk to the people we work with. Don't care enough to share a little, plant a little seed for Jesus today. Some of y'all's going to go out and eat lunch to do. The least you do is plant a seed to your waitress. Just, and I don't mean to get in there and beat her with the Bible. I'm just, just smile. Share some Jesus, man. Just show them how good God's been to you. Uh, grin a little bit, all right? Look here. I'm hurting pretty good this morning. I said, dead gummit, if I can smile, ain't no reason why y'all can't smile. Amen. Pop, how you doing today? Wonderful. See, he lies. He tells me that every time. <laughs> Wonderful. I know he hurts, but he ain't going to let me see that. He's hard-headed. That's why I'm so soft-headed, because he's got all the hard-headedness in the family, him and Cheryl. And, uh, but you know what most people want to do? How you doing? And they'll, for 30 minutes, they're going to tell you every little thing that's bothering them. My goodness. I mean, I, I guess a little old after a while. The church is sleeping. Then I want you to notice something else. Lastly, the church is stranded. Verse 43 says this, And Jesus came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and he left them. And he went away, and he left them. How many times has God come to speak to us, and we wasn't ready to hear it, and he left? I believe God's come by this morning to speak to somebody's heart, and somebody's not going to be ready to hear it. And it's going to pass right by. And you'll never get this chance back. That's why I say come. And we have prayer time before service as well as after. Because we need to get our hearts ready to worship. Prepared to hear what God has to say. They were stranded there. And Jesus left them and went back and prayed a third time. But then I want you to notice lastly. Not only were they sorrowful and sitting and stranded and sleeping. But they were also scared and scattered. Look at verse 56. Down a little bit in verse 56. The Bible says this. And all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Church, don't get caught unprepared. Why did the disciples flee Jesus? Why did all these boys that claimed to be his friends that just a few hours ago said, we'll never leave you, we'll die together. Why did they all run out right now? You don't know why? Because when Jesus took them on a prayer retreat to the woods, they fell asleep. Jesus knew what was coming up, and he knew they needed that time of prayer. Let me tell you something today. Jesus knows what's coming up in your life, and he knows you need some time on your face before God to prepare you. And if you don't get prepared, you're going to run scared and scattered just like they did. You know something, folks, the Bible says in the last days, the times are going to get worse and worse and worse. And I believe we're seeing the tip of the iceberg now. And it's only going to get more violent and more worse and, and more killing and more addictions. And we're going to see more bloodshed on our streets. And I'm telling you, folks, until Jesus comes back, it's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. And church, and we're not going to be ready when God comes back. He's going to find the church asleep today. And how dare the church be asleep while people are burning in hell right now, calling out in the middle of flames to the church, please wake up, go see my brother. Brother, please wake up. Go see my daughter. Somebody tell them about Jesus. And we sleep on. How do you handle stressful situations? Let's get our heart prepared. Today God give you some warning. Let's get our hearts ready and in tune with him. Because who knows what this week's going to hold. Stay with me.